Okay, so we're talking about how to do things, right? We're talking about when we write about how to do things, when we teach each other how to do things. Okay, and yesterday we generated a list, teach me how to. Okay, and we came up with some ideas. All right, you guys thought we could teach, you could teach me how to make an origami frog or an origami balloon, teach me how to play video games, play basketball, um, do, scissors, do scissors in PE, how to make a waterfall French braid, and I said I liked this one a lot because it was really specific, right? Um, how to drive a rhino, okay, how to memorize lines for a play, okay, this could be very useful, how to act in a play, how to make a paper airplane, how to ride a mini Z120 snowmobile, okay, I wouldn't know how to do that, how to drive a semi, I don't know how to do that either, how to drive a standard four-wheeler, how to take care of a chinchilla, how to drive an airplane, how to make bracelets, how to play soccer, how to stand on a horse, okay, while in motion, I think somebody said, how to do a Bigfoot call, and how to groom and tat a pony. Again, very specific ones here. So when we're talking about teaching somebody how to do something, we want to come up with something as specific as possible, okay? So if I were going to come up with my idea, I could, for example, I could say, I am going to, um, I am going to teach you how to, okay? And then this is basically what, what you got to decide, what you're going to teach me how to do or teach somebody else how to do. Maybe even somebody you don't know how to do. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to. So there's a bunch of different things I could put in here. And I'm going to show you what I mean. But I want to get very specific. Okay, so for example, how to make a waterfall French braid. Whoa, that's very specific. Okay, she could have just said how to braid hair. That's, there's diff many different ways to do that. Right, but how to make a waterfall French braid, you're going to have one result and that's the waterfall French braid. But for this, I'm going to teach you how to, think about this, if I say I'm going to teach you how to do math, teaching you how to do math, this could mean so many different things, couldn't it? Okay, it could mean, it could mean do something in geometry, which is what we just started. It could mean do something with multiplication, right? It could mean do something with measuring and cooking. Okay, this could mean way, way too many things. I don't want to teach you how to just do math. I've got to get very specific with you so that you know exactly what it is I'm teaching you and exactly what it is you want to learn from me, right? If you're going to go search for a video on how to do something, probably you're not just going to look for do math. Okay, because do you think this is going to give you very good results <coughs> if you want to learn how to do something specific in math? Well, if we think about what we're learning in math right now, okay, if we think about what we're learning in math right now, I could teach you some geometry concept. I could teach you about angles, right? So I'm going to teach you how to, I'm going to teach you how to, I'm not just going to say do math because that's not specific enough, all right? Um, measure... the angle measure the angles of and I'm going to get very specific here okay of 90 degrees one hundred eighty degrees Two hundred seventy degrees. I'm going to use my ampersand and three hundred sixty degrees in a circle. <coughs> okay, measure the angles, and we also talked about them as turns. 
Okay, so I'll write turns up there too, just so that we all understand what it is I'm going to teach you. Okay, so if I say to you, I'm going to teach you how to do math, you get one image in your head. It's probably you don't have anything specific in mind. You might think of a, a plus sign or something. And so maybe you see some numbers, I don't know. But if I say to you, I'm going to teach you how to measure the angles or turns of 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees in a circle. Do you guys have a better idea about what I'm going to teach you in math? Does that make sense to you? So let me show you what this might look like as you were brainstorming. How many of you have kind of decided on a specific thing you want to teach, or at least an area, like about math or science or riding a bike or something? Okay. How many of you think you have a specific thing? Okay. All right. Put your hands down. Thank you. Um, it's okay if you haven't decided yet. You still have a little more think time about it. But look, if I do this, okay, I can put my math at the top here because this is the area that I'm going to be talking about here. I'm not going to talk about social studies right now. Okay, I'm not talking about science. I'm just talking about math. But I can't just leave it at math because otherwise you have no idea what I'm going to tell you. Okay, I've got to get very specific. So math, and I know within math this is actually geometry. Okay, because this is the unit that we're doing. Geom geometry. Okay. Alright, and then within geometry, I'm going to actually talk about um, angles or turns. Okay, it could be called angles or turns. Um, and how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to use the degrees. Right? I'm going to use a circle to help with that. Okay, and I could write the degrees that I'm actually going to use. 360, 90, 180, 270. Okay, and then I could, anything else that I thought might go along with this, I could just draw a line off. If I thought it went to geometry, if I thought it went with the angles and turns, Okay, I might even start to think about my materials. Okay, what am I going to need to teach you these things? Well, for me, I'm going to need, let's see, uh, where do I want to write this? Soft geometry, angles and turns. Well, I'm going to need a marker. Okay, I'm going to need an easel. Okay, I'm going to need um, kids <laughs> who listen well. Right? And I better put polite kids. I don't want any rude kids here. Okay, so polite kids who listen well. I'm thinking about what I need. Okay, I'm just brainstorming this list. Now, you might brainstorm your list separately. You might have an I need list. Okay, and I also have to think about what you need. All right, I'm going to have to think about what you need to learn this. And yesterday, remember when I was teaching you this, this is part of the reason I'm using this example, because it's right fresh in your mind. Okay? What, I, what you needed to do is remember how I had you um, turn to the right and turn to the left, okay? You had to, you had to be able to use your body, so you needed to be able to move. You had to know your left from right, okay? So there's lots of things you have to think about when you're teaching how to, all right? Um, so I have to think about what I need. I have to think about what you need, okay? The kids need, okay, I needed you to know your left from right yesterday, <coughs> didn't right, I needed you to know clockwise and counterclockwise, Yeah. right, remember that, I needed you to know clockwise and counterclockwise. clockwise. And I was also, I was also depending on you to know that, I was also depending on you to be able to see that as the angle got bigger, the number got bigger. Okay? So that was something that I didn't talk to you about yesterday, but as a teacher, I knew that if you didn't know that, you would have a very hard time figuring that out. Because... 
Um, let me show you that, and then I'll write it. But we said that this was, right, if this is our circle, we'll draw that here. Okay, if it's this one here, that was just 90 degrees, right? Remember that? Just 90 degrees there? But then, when I opened it up, right, when I took this one and I moved it down another quarter turn so that it looked like that, right? I'll just draw that so you can see. So it actually went around here. That was 180 degrees. Okay? Well, is this making sense to you guys? Remember how it opened up? So it was like, I was depending on you to see that 90 plus 90 doubled itself. So I was depending on you to know, to know or to be able to understand how um, the numbers, I'm just going to say how the numbers got bigger, okay, get bigger um, with, how can I write this, I've made circles in the way, with a bigger angle, right, and if I were to take that even further, if I were to do another one for you, right, if I were going to go all the way around this way, so that it looked like this again, except this thing had moved here, so it went do -do 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 all around that way, it would be 270, right? It was like 90 plus 90 plus 90. But then if I just wanted to know this little angle in here, it would just be 90. But how much did it move? It would be 270. Because it was getting bigger as it went around. Give me a thumbs up if I'm sideways or a thumbs down if this is making sense to you. Okay, thank you. Very good. Um, and I, I think some of this concept has even making sense to you, even though we just started it yesterday. Because when I teach you how to do something, as a teacher, I teach you how to do stuff all the time. When I teach you how to do something, I have to know what you need. Okay, I have to know that what you need to know. You've got to know left and right. You've got to do clockwise and counterclockwise. Okay, you have to know numbers. Get bigger with a bigger angle. You have to be able to see that. Okay, I could also say things like you need to know English for this lesson. For the lesson that I gave you on this yesterday, you needed to know how to, how to speak English, mostly, okay? You probably could have gotten some of it without speaking English, but if I had given you the same lesson in Japanese, you probably would have had a harder time understanding it, right? Um, that's not something I need to make a list of, but you're going to need to think about your audience. So some of you, if you decide to teach about um, driving trucks or snowmobiles, Okay, I don't know a lot about those things. So if you're going to use special words, okay, specialized words like, I don't know, a, a gear shift or a drive shaft or, a, you know, you're going to have to explain those things a little more to me or draw a picture because I would have a very hard time following the conversation without knowing the language. So this is the other thing that I should put here. You needed to know... Kids needed to know the language. Okay, and I can almost hear some of you thinking it, of math. Right? We've talked about how math is its own language. So you needed to know the language of math. I could say geometry and angles and measuring, and you could go, what? Okay, that doesn't make any sense to me. All right? So... When you come up with how to do something, you've got to think about what the, the other person needs to know. All right? And then, this is kind of the next piece of this, but I'm just going to show it to you. The steps to doing it. All right? You've got to have the steps to get there. Now, let me ask you a question. Um, in your house... In your house, if you think about your staircases, show me with your fingers about how many steps your staircases have in your house. Okay, and I'm thinking inside your house. Okay, and you can blink for twice, you know. Okay, all right, if any of you have staircases in your house. Okay, so I'm seeing between 10 and 20 steps, about, okay, maybe 14, 24. Okay, all right, very good. Okay, great. I'm seeing lots of, lots of, maybe between, ten, I don't know, 10, 20 ish. Okay, maybe even more, I don't know. Um, and some of you maybe don't have any steps in your house. However, those of you that do have steps, okay, uh, imagine you just had one step between your first floor and your second floor. 
or between your first floor and your basement. How easy would that be to get from where you need to go? You'd have to be able to jump pretty high, wouldn't you? You could, you could say, let's say this is your house. Okay, and here's your second floor here. All right. Um, okay, actually, let's draw it like this. See so how two stories here. Okay, most of your houses probably look, right? Okay, I'm just going to draw it like that. So you can go up the stairs. There's kind of a big one in between there, but all right, we'll put some extra steps in. All right, now imagine that instead of having all those steps that you would just walk right up to, okay, you had to get from here to here, and you could only have just, um, just one step. That's all, okay, to get there. All right, that would mean you'd have to do a lot of training so that you could jump up there, okay, because you wouldn't really be able to go on the steps. I mean, that would be like six feet high, all right? Six feet is probably as tall as like this. You'd have to jump up there and then jump again. Okay, I don't know about you, but I can't jump six feet. Okay, that's a big, that, some of you maybe, I don't know, with a running start, but, um, you know, it's inside a house, and most of you aren't allowed to run in your houses, okay? But my point is, if you've only got one step, if I just said to you yesterday, okay, when you're trying to figure out these angles, um, you, just, you just do a turn. Okay, do you think that would have gotten you to your goal very easily? No, <laughs> it wouldn't have. You guys would have looked at me like, what's she talking about? Okay, <laughs> so when you think about teaching somebody how to do something, and you've got to think about it like you're telling a, a, a little child, Okay, especially if it's something you know how to do, you've got to break it down into as many steps as you can. Now, don't get ridiculous um, about it, but, but you can break things down probably into a lot more steps than you think you can. Okay, so I just want you to kind of be thinking about that um, as you get into this process of how to teach somebody to do something. So as you make your choice, make sure it's something that you're going to be able to talk about the steps about. Okay, I don't want any how-to pieces that tell me I have to jump six feet in the air and then jump six feet again to get there. Okay, that's not going to be very useful to anybody. All right, does that make sense to you guys? Give me a thumbs up, a thumb sideways, or a thumbs down. All right, so it seems like it's, seems like it's making sense to you this morning. That's wonderful. Okay, um, and so what we'll do next time for the next lesson is I'll take you through the steps of maybe I'll take you through the steps of something we're doing in math. But so you can see my breakdown. Um, but, but I want to tell you, some things, even simple things, um, like making a sandwich or putting your socks on, can be broken down into a lot of steps, like as many as 50, 70. I'm not even joking, okay? Do I necessarily expect you to break things down into 50 or 70 steps? No. Okay, we don't need to get ridiculous with this. We, we got to assume some common knowledge here. All right. However, um, well, I do want you to think about something that you know how to break down pretty well. Okay, and there's going to be a sequence of it. You know, something's going to happen first. Something's going to happen next. Something's going to happen after that. Okay. Um, so, what we're going to do right now is you guys are going to have a little bit of time to um, work on your how-to pieces. Okay, you're going to think about what's going up here, what's what your category is, and then you're going to get more specific with it. Then you're going to think about what you need to know, what your audience needs to know. Okay, and then we're going to think about the steps we need to get there. That's kind of where we're going with this unit. Okay, um, and I'll do some other little lessons in between to kind of get you guys there. All right, any questions? Did you turn it off?